979-1055, KISS FM. It is Listen, It's Liz, and I am so excited. We are in our last and final Wednesday here, and that means we are Thinking Pink with Fred F. Collison Sons. And for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we are bringing and Thinking Pink all month long by having different breast cancer survivors come in studio with me. And I'm so excited to have Diane Call in with me. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. You're great, and I love... Okay, we have a personal connection, me and you. We've known each other for quite a while. I'm good friends with your daughter, and by association, good friends with you, right? Yes. (laughs) And um, for you, when I heard the news, I remember thinking, oh no, what are we going to do? What's going to go down? And I guess for you and your this journey of like going through breast cancer, what was it for you and where did it start? It started after a mammogram on February 9th, Mm -hmm. um, after three years of not having one because of COVID. Right. And uh, the the tech said, you need more pictures. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay. And that had never happened before. Right. And then after the second set of pictures, the doctor herself came out and said, "Um, I still don't like what I'm seeing. There's something different and we need a ultrasound. Yeah. And it has to be the next day. I'm like, oh, okay, boy. this is getting okay. serious now. Right. So we had that done the next day, the 10th. And then I went, um, I opted to go to Oneida, to Oneida Health mm-hmm. and saw Dr. Greco. Yep. Um, which was a great experience. Question of, do I have a mastectomy? And she said, no, you don't need one. Mm. It's curable. It's treatable. That's way too extreme right so okay um and in between all that i also had a biopsy done right that was done february 23rd so march 1st was the first appointment with the surgeon and march 23rd was my surgery Mm -hmm. the information was not given correctly yeah and the tumor was larger than they thought Mm -hmm. and there was also one in the lymph nodes um wow so yeah they just it just kept it it just kept coming Correct. Mm-hmm. And then I decided to go to the Mayo Clinic. Yes. Because I have a connection there, yeah. as well as being a patient already there in Rochester, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And an MRI was done, and they found cancer in the right breast as well. Yeah. And the margins were supposed to be cleaned out of the left because mm-hmm. it was larger than they thought. And I opted. Once I got to the Mayo Clinic and saw what was going on, I said, okay, I'm done with this. I have a grandson to raise. (laughs) Right, right. And to see grow up. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am not dealing with this in another five years, another 10 years. I just want them off. Mm -hmm. So I had a double mastectomy May 2nd. And this all happened this year. Correct. And I think it's important to note, because of COVID, you hadn't been going to your normal appointments. Right. But b- before that, were you going on every a regular year. basis? Okay, so every year. Every year. And do you have a history of it in your family? Nope. So, and that's that's the craziest part, is in three years, what happened and what they found. And now, you know, like you said, you've got a grandson and you've got daughters. And now this is something that's really important to note and make sure your family is taken care of. Right. And I did the gene testing, and thank God mm-hmm. I don't carry the genes, so my girls don't have to worry about that. Right, right. But have your mammograms, people. Mm-hmm. That's like your biggest takeaway for sure, mm-hmm. right? Totally. And, you know, my mom also fell into the same thing of not going because of COVID. You know, nobody was doing anything. And and it's just so important to note that just because you feel like you're okay and you can do your monthly checks at home, and that's something you should also be doing as well. But um, you just never know. And I think it's important if you don't feel right to go, because like you said, they they just kept saying, oh, we need more pictures. Well, they said I wouldn't even have felt it. No. No, there was not, it was not a lump that I could feel. Mm, that's, see, that's even, that's, So mm-hmm. I would never have found it. Yeah. And it's just frightening to me that the tumors from 2019 to 2023 yeah. had grown to the size that they had grown to. Yeah. And... I'm very blessed. I'm very lucky. Yes. And, and it's been, and then I had radiation as well. Mm-hmm. Um, after the mastectomy, I had radiation in Rochester, New York. Yeah. I, I opted to stay closer to home. Yeah, right. And and for you, you know, now that you are a part of this, this sea of pink that now is your journey and now you are a part of, um, did you have anybody else you could talk to about it that you could relate to at the um, time? Personally? Yes. 
Um, just Noelle. Yeah. And yep. Noelle's mom. Mm -hmm. Um, it runs in her family. And did you feel anything about talking about like with with them? Did it help you kind of go through it? Or did you have a really great support system? As I had well? a great support yeah. system. I have a tribe. Mm -hmm. of yes, people, you do. Uh huh. A whole tribe of people. I'm so lucky. Yeah. Between my husband, my kids, and my friends that mm -hmm. surrounded me and checked in with me every day. And the hardest part was they were saying, "What happens next?" And I was like, "I don't know. I don't have all the information yet." Right. I had to keep saying, <laughs> "I don't have all the information yet." Right. So right. So it was very difficult to know what was happening next until. Mm -hmm. It actually happened. Yeah, right. I mean, I was so excited to see you ring the bell. And I was so happy to hear that you were like, this is what we're going to do. And you you stayed very positive. I did. Through the whole experience. Um, and it's because I feel like you were you were fighting not only for yourself, but for your family. Because you, you were going to be here. And that's just that. Um, and for you, this is the first year that you've ever been a part of making strides against breast cancer. Yes. And um, is it something now that you want to potentially do every single year? I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> Rock the pink and we're thinking pink. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing your story. Thanks, Liz. I appreciate it so very much. And your one little tidbit, the one piece of knowledge that you hope that somebody gets out of this is what? Get your mammograms. Mm -hmm. Get those mammograms. We are Thinking Pink. More details over at cnykiss.com. It's Think Pink with Fred F. Collison's and Kiss FM.